What's up guys, this is Chris here from Honest Outlaw and today we are here in Iowa on this beautiful scorching day to give you one of the guns I've been waiting for for a really, 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 really long time. I saw this at SHOT Show I think two and a half years ago. And I was pretty excited about it because at the time there was no other real competitors to this. The roller delayed stride bug had not come out yet. The JP5 was not announced. And this thing really was the new hotness. And it took quite a while for it to come out and I think it lost a little steam to be honest with you. But I don't think it lost too much. If you're unfamiliar with the Agstan Arms MDP9, I've actually been talking about it for quite a while. I've even done a couple of preview videos on it just because I'm so excited about it. I have no uh, link with a company or anything like that. So I actually purchased this with the uh, patron dollars, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But uh, this is a nine millimeter AR with AR controls. You can take AR triggers, AR safeties, all that good stuff. But it's a roller delayed system like the MP5, SP5, meaning that it'll have a lot less recoil than a standard blowback system. And on top of that, it only weighs three and a half pounds. So that fits a lot of niches in my personal opinion. It's about the same weight as the X-Star EP9 with the same controls, except it's all metal. The X-Star is all polymer. And uh, it also is the roller delayed system, which should be very reliable while suppressed. We'll check that today. And it should be very low recoil for the lightweight that it is. Now, I love things that really fit the category that they're in. And a lot of people will say, why would you want this? Well, I like PCCs, right? I like PCCs for a couple different reasons. I like to burn really fast up close. That's why I like the MPX, because it's very, very quick. I like the MP5 because it's also very fast, it's very reliable, and it would be a very good home defense PCC. This one in particular strikes me as a more critter getting type of thing. You know, have a nine millimeter caliber, you have the accuracy capable of a headshot at 100 yards, but it only weighs three and a half pounds and you can shoot it suppressed with no ear pro on and it'll be very, very quiet. Not only that, but it takes Glock mags, which is pretty cool. It does come with two, what looks to be 27 round P mags here. And uh, that is a nice addition as well, considering I have about 100 of those. So it fits a lot of niches for me personally. Uh, I like the lightweight. I like if you're gonna have a nine, it might as well be lighter than a 5.56 right because a lot of PCCs are actually pretty heavy you look at the high point carbine or a few other guns in that class even the mp5 for example is as heavy or heavier than a lot of my ARs and at that point you're like do I really want to go nine millimeter or should I just go five five six but three and a half pounds and it also takes readily available magazines that you could use for not only this gun, but you could use for your sidearm, which is a very common technique that most cowboys in the Old West use. You know, 45 Colt for your handgun, 45 Colt for your rifle, or whatever particular caliber you were using at the time. But that means you can carry the same ammo for both guns, and it simplifies things. But not only the same ammo, but now you have the same magazines as well. So if, you're, if your primary gun or your backup gun goes down, you still have all the mags that you're carrying available for whatever weapon system that you have. So. I think it's really cool. Well, let's go through it really quick. It's got a five inch barrel with it looks like their, their uh, muzzle brake, it looks like there, cause it's got a little chevron on it. And then it's got a tri-lug mount, which we already did uh, mount my Omega 9K to make sure it works. A little tight, but it fit on there. Forward charging handle there, non-reciprocating. Uh, that's pretty nice, although it is really, really close to the barrel. So we'll see how that goes. QD mounts here. It has M-Lock rail system on the front, and it's got a very, very skinny rail, but it does look like it's pretty easy to grip. One thing I'll have to be careful of, like all PCC, especially the Banshee, is when I do this magwell grip, I like to stick my big gangly fingers into the uh, ejection port, and uh, I paid for that a few times. We have a super confusing magazine release here, and I think that's partially due to the Glock magazines. Uh, Glock magazines always end up having some weird release because of how they're released out of the handgun, and it's not ergonomically designed for a PCC. Uh, but you have this giant button here that you can press, or you can press this little button here, uh, which is kind of attached to it, and for whatever reason, it just seems like an extended magazine release, although they do have two places for you to push for, for whatever reason. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the hell that's about. We have single-sided controls, although you could easily put a radiant in there which I probably plan to b5 systems vertical grip which is pretty cool I like that a lot uh, it gives you a more forward grip and for a short length of pull that's very nice uh, it doesn't come with a brace or anything like that you'll have to get that separately uh, it's got a lot of screws and or rivets in it uh, that give me a little pause to be honest I don't know if you can see the side of this gun I imagine that's where the rollers are but you can see there's one two three four five six seven eight uh, screws there uh, and they look like star head screws sorry seven screws that's actually a roll pin um, 
And to me, most people would be like, ah, whatever. But I don't know. I see six or seven failure points there. <laughs> <laughs> to me personally. I've had a lot of screws rattle out in my lifetime and uh, hope that's not the case here. They're on the other side as well. Uh, Agstan Arms is well known for making, I think, the UDP-9. I've never had any experience with it, but anybody who has has told me that they are great guns. They come for a pretty premium price. This one comes in for about $2,500-ish, $2,600, depending on where you get it. And uh, hopefully today we'll have a very pleasant experience. I have a real high expectations for this particular gun, and usually when that happens, I get let down, but hopefully that's not the case. Today we're going to be shooting some Turkish 9mm ammo. We're also going to be using uh, some uh, 147 grain uh, federal ammo for the suppressor. Um, both ammunitions worked uh, actually two days ago when we shot the Zenith MP5. I'm using the exact two types of ammunition on this gun because obviously this is a direct competitor to the SP5 or MP5K, uh, being as it literally looks like an AR had a baby with an MP5K. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be using that. Hopefully we'll have a good experience. Before we do that though, I do want to mention the patron guys. Thank you guys. You guys bought this gun for me to do the review, so I appreciate that. If you want to help out the channel, all you got to do is go to the link in the description and sign up. That's the best way. Uh, another way to help with the channel is just like and subscribe and share the videos. Obviously hit the notification bell. YouTube as it is nowadays, you won't see any notifications from me unless you hit the notification bell. And then finally, I want to uh, mention a link in the description for a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. They're a youth shelter in Iowa. They're doing a lot of good stuff. So please get on there, click that link, and donate to those kids. All right, now I think the ideal way to sling this bad boy is probably going to be with a single point sling. This looks like a QD mount here, but... It is really tough to get into, and I'm using BCM QDs with the new T-Rex arm sling. I saw him run it the other day, and it looked kind of slick, so I figured I'd try it out. I personally really like two-point slings, but here's going to be my issue, right? Not only do you not have a lot of space on the rear, because it is a very small gun, but as you can see here, the QD mount on the front of the gun, although it does exist there, you kind of have to turn it to an off angle because you can't run the charging handle otherwise. And even when you do have it there, you can see that it covers up almost the entire uh, area that you can actually grab said charging handle. So I'm not entirely sure how ergonomically I'm going to enjoy this gun. It seems pretty obvious it's meant, even though it has kitty mounts in the front for a single point sling, because I don't really know how you could run this successfully. Uh, we might give it a little shot here today, or we might try to slide it on the left side and I might try to do some, some weird funky shit, but we'll give it a shot. We are known for weird funky shit, aren't we? Is that what we are known for? I don't know that and just being general. Hillbillies? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're running the same hollow sun we had on the Zenith, and uh, we'll see if it's zeroed here. Wow. Well, that didn't take very long. Looks like we have a, yeah, we've got a malfunction. It fell. Bring my trigger finger off the trigger guard to, to keep it up here where I like to keep it. I'm inadvertently hitting the magazine release. Uh, this is just a small gun and I'm a big guy, so it's big guy problems. That's a dead trigger again. Let's take it apart here. Now this is our Turkish ammo. We might have to switch out ammo here. Let's take a look at that round. See if it's a light primer strike, which it is, light primer strike. Hold on. Now it's certainly possible that since these are Turkish ammo, this might be NATO rounds. Uh, so it might be a little harder primer than it's accustomed to. So we'll try to shoot this mag out, and then we'll switch to uh, we'll switch to Federal or Fioki and give that a go. That's it. Light primer strike. Cool. We'll switch it out. All right. So this is the ammo we were just using. We got this from True Shot. Thanks for that, True Shot. Uh, this usually works with almost everything. Had no problem with the Zenith yesterday. Had no problem with a few other pistol caliber carbines. I shot 200 rounds through my MPX with this the other day as well. Uh, it ran just fine. Um, pretty cheap for what it is, but obviously this gun doesn't like it. So what we've done here is we went and got some Federal Train and Protect. We got 10 rounds in there. This is actually what I use for competition usually. So I, I, this is just on top, I grabbed this. So we have a magazine of this, and then we have a magazine of Aguila right here. And then over here we have a mag of 147 grain Federal. So we're going to try all these mags and see if... I have a lot of point of impact shift. A 
Well, those ran all great. So maybe it's just that, it could be just, you know, the NATO primers or whatever. Let's try the uh, Eli here. Now, I think that'll work because one of the reasons why I use it is it's fucking extremely high quality ammunition, in my personal opinion. Oh, inadvertent magazine drop from a big dumb hands. Point of impact shift again. But 100% reliability, that's good. So it just doesn't like that ammo, I think. Now the Aguila, which is the cheapest of all of them on the table, I think. Try a little C-clamp grip, but we're getting real hot up here. It is 90, and I was usually cold, so I'm kind of a bitch. The controllability on this is super nice, though, I gotta admit. But that mag release is fucking me up hard. Let's see. A little tacta midget. Huh. Tacta midget. That gun fits you a lot better than it does me. Try aiming above it a little bit. Okay. Put the dot on the top of the plate. Yep, I had a little change of impact with the, with the new ammo. You have a failure? I think so. Well, this really sucks considering we, we bought this. <laughs> that offside charging handle for the lefties has gotta be awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I have smaller hands than you. That's true. Most people do. Oh, how about that? You have another? So let me take a look at it here. I'll leave it on and you hand me the gun. I want to see what's going on. Is it another light primer strike? I don't know. Did I just stick it up? It, I don't know. We'll see here. You ready? Catch it around. It fell off the bottom. Oh, okay. I can't find the round. It doesn't matter here. Here's your gun. Keep her going, I guess. Like, am I doing it right? Yeah, you're doing it right. You okay. just, it, it had a light primer strike, just like me. Okay, you ready? You're not doing anything wrong. I thought you were, but you're not. I try not to do things wrong. I try to do things wrong. What the fuck? Nothing. Let me hit it. You get behind the camera. I'm gonna run that mag out. What's that about? The chamber's not locking. mags that came with the gun. Nothing. Try a new mag. It seems to me like it's not locking. Here, let me come to that side. Because I've got room here. Now you can see this, it's on safe. I can fit my finger in there. And you can actually see the round right there. Oops, sorry. So, I'm not familiar with this operating system, but I guess I'm gonna have to go back, take it apart, see if there's any obstructions, and come back out, and uh, maybe we'll see if we can get a little footage of that. What are we doing now, babe? Uh, well, there is a round in the gun, okay? And no charging handle, the charging handle fell off. Now, I don't know how that happened, but we gotta go find it in the freaking grass. I am really excited about my purchase. This sucks, because lately, you know, I had the shadow systems that I really wanted to work and it didn't work and people were, lately I've had just a series of terrible like reviews and I don't know, I'm not doing this on purpose. I really want this thing to work. I've been talking this thing up for two years. I could not, I could not wait to get this. I was yelling at my wife last night because I wanted to shoot it the second we got it home. And uh, yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta lower my expectations clearly. This is, I don't know. Frustrating. I don't know, I'm mad. All right, so it's been a couple days since we figured out the issue. I actually had to get a hold of one of my friends and uh, figure out what's going on. Uh, so, a lot of these have red Loctite on the front of this here, and this is the set screw for the charging handle. And what happened was the set screw came out and the charging handle fell off in action. So, I had a lost charging handle in, my, in the grass here uh, for quite a while while there was a live round stuck in the gun that I could not eject. Uh, so I'm not overly excited considering this is a very expensive gun and that's That's kind of an oversight not putting any Loctite or anything on that set screw at all. It's not even tight uh, Then on top of that we have this weird cheesy washer spacer here on the brake And then we've had a lot of other parts related issues as well. I'm not entirely sure how much R&D they did on this gun before it came out 
but I'm under the assumption they didn't do enough. So we've had quite a few failures on this gun already. Hopefully we have a better time today. I had to move. It shot me right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> not the first time. It's not. And one thing I really like about this gun is that it takes Glock mags, but the thing I don't like is even if the chamber is open and we only have the magazines downloaded, we only have 20 rounds in this, if I jam this in here like I would normally jam in a PCC in my MPX or something, I can just pull the damn thing right back out. That time it actually seated. But I'm having a lot of problems with magazine seating, and particularly because of this extended magazine release, every time I have my hand on the gun where the trigger isn't in the trigger guard, I inadvertently dump the mag, and I have a failure. So, that's a real problem for me, because this gun fits into like a personal defense niche, and it's lightweight, it's very light. So even though it has a roller blade system, it has a good bit of recoil by comparison to the MP5, which is like a pound and a half heavier, right? Now, the MP5 is dirty reliable, and that's what you want for a personal defense weapon, whereas this is just unreliable enough to not be in my self-defense carry rotation and not, like, shootable enough to be in my competition I want to shoot for fun rotation. So over the past few days, I've kind of found out personally, this just doesn't really fit in any niche I'm really interested in. And for the price that it is, it's kind of hard to justify. I mean, when I buy a $2,700 gun, I want it to shoot really well. And I want it to be real reliable. And I gotta tell you, just so far, I'm not vibing with it. All right, so I can tell you that my, you could argue this is my final impressions because I honestly don't think that I have real want to do a thousand round review of this. And I know that kind of sounds crazy because I've wanted this gun for a really long time. And I thought it was gonna be the shit. I liked it on paper. It looked like it was gonna do very well. And I just gotta tell you, for whatever reason, for one reason or another, it's not really vibing with me. I've had user-induced malfunctions like crazy on this gun, and just based on that, I know it's not right for me. Can't really knock the gun for that necessarily, although I can't imagine how you wouldn't also have these problems. Uh, one of the things you could theoretically could do is literally just cut the damn extended uh, mag release off. You know, you could just take a little Dremel and cut it right there. I'm not saying you should do that, but if I was gonna keep this gun, I would do that. Uh, the charging handle held in by that little set screw and it able to fall out as easily as it did was a real ergonomic issue for me. Another issue that I find is that the sling mount is directly under the charging handle, not allowing me to mount a sling. The fact that it came with this super cheesy, not even coated washer that kind of sticks out weird, it's, my tri-lug system didn't mount on it like it's supposed to. The recoil impulse is a lot harsher than I actually expected it to be, and that's really surprising to me because I literally shot the Zestava ZF5 this week, and I shot it the day before I shot this, and it's night and day difference, and they're very similar in size. I have an MP5K or an SP5K, shoots significantly better than this, and it's very ultra lightweight and very compact as well. All the features of this gun that I really liked ended up sort of not being something I'm that interested in, believe it or not. Uh, the three, three and a half pound weight is cool for me to carry it around, and I, I would love to carry it around as kind of a shit hit the fan gun. The problem is it's not reliable enough. We had so many reliability issues with this, not just user induced, but we had light primer strikes. We also had a round stuck in the chamber, and we had a double feed that I literally had to get a knife in there and pry out. That would have been a complete catastrophic failure if you were trying to use it for self-defense. There's no way you would have been able to clear it out based on the, the regular methods. You've got that, plus on Tim's video, Military Arms Channel, his roll pins walked out during the video. Uh, can't guarantee mine won't do that, but I can guarantee I won't put enough rounds through to find that out. Um, we got screws all along the side here, now very reminiscent of an ACR, but it's still, every time I look at all those things, I look at all, like, considering I've already had this fall out, I've had the charging handle fall off, Tim had the pins walk out, now every single screw I see on this thing, we got a screw up here, I have to continually pay attention to, and I'm afraid they're all gonna fall out as well. So, maybe some of this is like, I just don't feel comfortable with this gun anymore, 
but I don't. I, I don't feel like this will go off when I want it to, and I feel like it's every step away from falling apart. And every little screw and piece that falls out of this on my range out there is a piece that I'm gonna have to contact somebody to get replaced or I'm gonna have to look through my yard forever like we did yesterday. And it's just a real hassle that I, I just don't need. I, I have an X-Star EP9, you know, and people can discount that gun all they want, but I have 2,000 rounds for that gun with zero failures. I've got 100 rounds to this gun with more failures than I can count on both my hands. And that's $400, this is $2,700. It's three and a half pounds, this is three and a half pounds. It takes Glock mags, this takes Glock mags. It has light recoil, this has relatively light recoil for the weight it is. Now if you shoot this compared to a CMMG Banshee, a Scorpion Evo, you're gonna notice this has more recoil. And that's kind of counterintuitive considering how much time and money they spent on the roller delayed system. But, yeah, huge disappointment in my opinion. I've been waiting for this since SHOT Show of what was it, 2020 or 2019? 2020. Couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I, I went and I saw this the day it came out on Gunbroker. Bought one. I bought it right from Agastan Arms. The email list was from Agastan Arms. I just, they weren't any in stock because people pre order and I don't pre order because my experience with pre orders is that sometimes you pay for a gun that never comes out, a la the semi automatic AA12 and so on and so on it goes. So I wait for the gun to actually be per, like produced and in the market before I try to buy it. Uh, so I went that route. Mm. What can I say? I'm not gonna keep this gun. This doesn't fit any niche for me. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please stop at your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.